Have you seen the thing where if they take the wine and they put blue food coloring in it and they give it to like master sommeliers and they tip, they sip it, they cannot tell the difference between reds and whites? Have you seen that study? No, no. it's extraordinary. I would like to see that. You know, it's some, all some BS. I'm sure you could tell because some have like the super skin like I mean but master sommeliers many, yeah. they they can't even tell like sometimes it's like oh like you're supposed to like tell what, like the region of origin and like yeah. you know they get very specific and like this was this what year was this and like how are the grapes grown yeah. and, and they literally can't tell red white like, that's that's huh. that's comforting yeah yeah you're good you're, so because wine for me is now a proxy of value if i'm buying wine for dinner it's like i like them 20 dollars worth <laughs> yeah. like, hey no do you know what time it is what time is it steven it's time to talk about death and taxes do 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 every time i it's a habit now Guys, welcome to Let's Talk About Death and Taxes. My name is Noah Chrysler. On this show, we talk about death and taxes, the two things in life that Ben Franklin uh, said were inevitable. Um, it, it confirmed this time. We know for a fact he did say that, or at least he's attributed to saying it. Cool. Uh, guys, introduce yourselves. Oh, hey. I'm uh, Stephen Schreiber. I'm a, a state attorney. <laughs> and I'm James Champlin. I am also... And a state attorney. Awesome. I need like some sort of badge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A state attorney at law. Yeah. Steven Scribe. You flip it open. <laughs> and my my yeah, bar card is a picture. Oh, I, 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 got the, I got the photo bar ID card because oh, I didn't I think people would believe I was a lawyer. Well, I always card. keep my bar card in like a little mini wallet that I can like flip open and hold out. That's Like sick. an ID. Yeah, That's totally. Sick. I've always done that. That's really cool. Like, yeah, you do like, it, like when I go to the courthouse, it's just I've been I've been Turning. rewatching Supernatural a little bit, and so oh, yeah. like they just like they flip open their badges. Yeah, you do the flip, stuff, or the other so. good one is you um you like you pinch it, so it's like you flip it up, so like you're holding it. Oh, like, that's like, cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'll I have like that. my bar card, and then you know a photo ID that I would use. Like like Cook County, you have to have your bar card and the Cook County Sheriff's badge. And it would say like Cook County Sheriff, and have your photo on it. They don't let it. they don't let us probate attorneys into the courthouse. We have no special access. <laughs> well, actually, if I've gone yeah. into the courthouse. My day is not going great. What do you What do you think is like the lowest level, like lowest effort certification that I could get to have like a flip out badge that I have? Like, Maybe like, uh, you, like could, a... you could join MUFON. What is that? <laughs> I think that's the Mutual Unidentified Flying Object Network or something like that. Oh yeah, you can join... they'll send you like an ID and you can like flip it out and say like you're a civilian investigator. I, I'm pretty really sure okay. that. You yeah. got to go with those cards to be like what was it called when people. Get the right to do weddings. The Universal Life Church. Yeah, is that they, it? They used to, yeah, exactly. Like you get it. Like oh those, yeah, no ordaining yeah. cards. No, I was. I'm an ordained like, minister. You can do that in two you, minutes you, online. You, you, like, you, don't worry, I'm a minister. They'll charge you for the card. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I didn't know I could get a little bad. Because for if it, someone's having an emergency, you're like, I can't help them, but I can give them the yeah. last rites. <laughs> I mean, realistically, nobody can stop you from buying a small ID wallet and flipping it open and saying whatever you want. Yeah. As long as you're not saying you're law enforcement. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're a doctor. I can make up my own role. Yeah, that's say Hold on. I'm Noah. I'm that guy. And it's you just, just like, like, a picture, like, a, it's like a signed picture like of yourself. If you ever, like if you're going on a date and it's like a first date, you can walk off and be like, hey, I'm your date. Oh, I hate that. I would be. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I'm like, no, you aren't. <laughs> oh, hey, red flag. <laughs> Run away as fast as hey, you can. Hey, I haven't dated in a while. <laughs> Hey, I'm really weird, like, and I've never met anyone ever, and I never leave my room. If, if Lance died and had to date like, again, and that you was can't, my date. If that you can't would, handle yeah. me at my weirdest, you don't deserve me at my normalist. Not true. Like yeah, if, if people true. can't handle me at my weirdest, like I do not blame them. It gets pretty weird. Um. Anyway, guys. <laughs> oh my god. On this show, we talk about uh, it's 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 an estate planning advice show. This is not legal advice. We're gonna preface it with that. Um. This it's is more entertainment for, advice. We are exactly. attorneys. We are not your attorneys. Yes. We Unless could you be. call and hire us. Exactly. Yeah, for right price, I'll do, I'll, I can lawyer for you. Exactly. Um, if you would like an attorney, go ahead, send us an email, Modern Estate Planning, I'm sorry, info at modernestateplanning.com. Correct. Give us a call, 404 939 7562. Until that point, uh, we, this is not advice, so don't uh, t don't go ahead Act and on it. Yeah, yeah it'll take everything exactly. at your own risk. I shouldn't make a joke out of that. That's just very serious. <laughs> literal, like, it is very don't serious. Do it. Call uh, call, call, yeah. attorney, call any attorney. Yes. <laughs> Before you do anything, if you hear something on the show and you think that sounds like a good idea, I should do that. Yeah, run it past an attorney. Exactly. Yeah, that's that you fine are paying. One. That you have they, you, preferably your Even attorney. They'll give you a free <laughs> yeah. consult. That's true. Yeah, run it past an attorney. Sweet. Yeah. First question comes from avo.com. <clears throat> what happens to a loan under my husband name, a husband's name when he dies? It's for a bed. Would they take my bed away? He took a loan out at Wells Fargo to pay for a new bed. He passed away last month and everything I read says I'm not allowed 
um, I'm not responsible for the loan um, if it's under a deceased spouse's name. Would they take my bed away? Um, he has no estate. Okay. I do have a question. So it depends. So yeah. it, the, the, prop, the answer is probably you're fine. Okay. The, it would depend if the loan was secured by the bed. So if they took out, like, it went to Wells Fargo and took out a general loan, um, and they gave him, like, a thousand bucks, which he happened to use on a bed, and the wife, no one else co-signed on it. It was just in his name. Um, that's just, that, that is going to be an estate debt that the wife is probably not personally liable for. And under Georgia law, generally, if she defaults or the estate has no other assets to pay the loan, the bank will probably just write it off. Okay. In the bizarre scenario, maybe not in the bizarre, I, I don't, I've never bought a secured fr loan. I never had a furniture with a secured loan, but... Um, yeah, it's, I think it's so funny. <laughs> I like, almost wonder if maybe it's just not phrased correct. I wonder if maybe they like bought it from a store and then the financing yeah, agreement... Yeah, probably through Wells Fargo. Was through, through Wells yeah. Fargo. That and makes sense. in that situation... That, that's what I imagine is more like a Wells Fargo credit card. Yeah. Gotcha. Which is, as I imagine it before, it's like she took out a loan right. and so then if, used if it to it buy was, it Yeah, so it was like a financing agreement through the store. That's exactly that what it must be. Because the, the, idea often, of going, yeah. the idea of going to a Wells Fargo and being like, hey, I really need like money for a bed. <laughs> I need a bed. <laughs> Like, be a really nice bed. Oh, yeah. oh okay. God! I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay, no, 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 oh, oh, if it's a nice enough bed, yeah. oh, I, I, okay, wait, man. <laughs> so, I, I so to, okay, this is where I want Casper to be a sponsor because I can talk about my Casper, but it's totally but, but they're not, it. so you won't. I, 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 they won't. They, I, they their won't. check is not here yet. But, but um, I mean, generally, would you say you have good things to say? Yes, I have great. And, things but we're going to gonna say. stop there. <laughs> yes, but they we'll won't know until until they call us. Yes, exactly. exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. so if that's the case, if it is like a finance agreement through a store where where you got it, and it's just yeah. being controlled by Wells Fargo, then there is a chance that that might be what? one of these things where you know you don't fully own the bed until right. you paid off. Yeah. It's like leveraged or whatever. Yeah. Right, almost like, like, rent, not yeah. like a rent to own, but something like that. So yeah, sure. so it's hard to tell because yeah. I yeah. If the if the loan's attached to the bed, they might take the bed back. But honestly, could you? She could, may she may just want to resume payments on the bed using her own income if she wants to keep the. Yeah. Regardless, if she's using the bed, and the, and there's a chance that they might take the bed, just pay the loan. And Is a company they could file a creditor claim against his estate. Yeah, and then the court could look into his estate because she says he does not have an estate, but that's. Everyone has no, an estate. Everybody has an estate. This hasn't been filed with the court yet. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. And if and if he really bought a bed that's just in his name and it's just his name on this bed, well, then th th they're going to argue with the court. Well, this is his estate asset, and then they could come after. They could come they after could the bed. They could theoretically sue the. They could sue the estate it. and then right. get a For judgment. But unless it's a very nice bed, I imagine a bank may not want to waste that much time. They yeah. may just sell the debt to a collections Who, agency. And that's, yeah. that's exactly it'll, it'll my question. In real like, life, they'll end up either being settled or written off. How much would it? Would a bank theoretically like be like like if a bed costs a thousand dollars? How much does a repo guy like cost? It's got to be like a couple hundred bucks, right? Yeah, they're like, gonna attempt to charge the legal fees and the fees of repossessing yeah. it to the person too. Gotcha. But if they'd have the money to pay the initial loan, good luck getting the repo money mm -hmm. or the legal fees back right. I'm skeptical I think I'm skeptical that that much will happen um, most companies are not going to throw good money after bad for a thousand dollars so keep the bed unless a repo guy starts knocking <laughs> okay that, so if you're yeah. using the bed I would recommend either refinancing mm -hmm. it into your own name or paying for it right. but if it's and honestly if they want the bed back and you don't care about the bed maybe you had different bedrooms or he had, it was maybe it was some sort of maybe specialty sick, bed yeah. for his mm -hmm. sickness <laughs> and you right. don't I mean maybe you just want to return the bed but I don't know no oh, okay but it's it's very specific. <laughs> that's great, that's great it's to say a, on an advice show. Very, it's a very specific question. <laughs> right. well, I think we it's don't we specific. don't know because we just don't know enough about the loan itself. Exactly. Right. right. right? It's a lot of that's going to come down to the terms of the loan. Mm -hmm. And I guess your your estate planning takeaway is a creditor on a loan can come after an estate, and your estate will include more than just like my land. Yeah. Right. right? It's all your stuff. Right. It, it, so they could come after them but, for something. But, but, if, 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 but an example, like if it was instead of a bed, it was a car. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there was a car loan that was secured by the car. They would repossess the car if it wasn't paid, regardless gotcha. of the status of the estate. Because And same for a mortgage, whether or not the estate is probated, if the mortgage isn't paid, they will foreclose on the house. 
um, because they have superior interests over everything else. So if the bed is secured, I guess they'll, they can take the bed. Um, and if it's not, it's just an unsecured creditor that gets in line with all the other unsecured creditors in a, a state. So a secured loan means it's tied it's to tied a to physical that specific thing. asset. That's yeah. cool. I didn't, specific thing. Yep. I didn't know that. Which is why term. secured loans are usually at a lower interest rate because they know oh, okay. that if you get the thing, that if you don't pay it, they can get the object back. Yeah. And then that'll change their place in line to take from the estate. Yeah. Gotcha. They, oh, they, they get they, the object first. Yeah. Gotcha. There's a whole hierarchy of, of who gets what from the estate in what order. And, and there's ways that you can try and boost yourself up a little bit through different mechanisms. But those secure loans are outside the order. Be, they trump yeah. the whole order. They right. get the house wow. or the car or whatever they made the money for. The we got to talk about that at some point. Not right now because we're going to move on to this and it's going to be really That's fair. interesting to talk sure. about. Move on. But um, the, I, I want to talk about the pecking order of that at some point. So somebody I, I, remind I, I, me. I, I could just, I could roll, uh, later on, I'll roll it off the top of my head. I, I actually think I have the entire Georgia priority of creditors. All right. Well, memorized. maybe this is a standalone clip, guys. Apparently, there's this thing. Yeah, do, we have, do we have time for a standalone <laughs> clip right now? Sure, yeah, we can grow with it. Because it's, um, it's, it's way too long to explain. Um, oh, it's just, okay. It's, it's a long okay. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it another episode. It's my, my soul is gotcha. dead and I know the answer. I thought of a lot of jargon like a... to explain as well. Sweet. Yeah, <laughs> it's a 45-minute rabbit hole. And I want Oscar to do a graphic. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. yeah, we'll do a graphic. Ooh, a little graphic. We'll do it later. Right too. Here. Yep. Um, great. This next question. Um, so so recently, uh, if you guys have, haven't heard, I feel like this was on every single social media thing ever and like tons of headlines. Um, Patrick Boz, is it Bozeman? Is it Chadwick. 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 Chadwick Bo- oh, my God. Oh, I got to restart from the top. Okay. okay the, that's Oscar, again. This cl- the clip starts here. Leave um, it in. <laughs> please don't. Leave it in. <laughs> It'll be the full episode. So. Leave it in. Um, if you listen to the full episode, see, this is why you got to come back because it's a little goodies like this. Um Guys, recently, uh, gotta, I'm gonna start one more time. Uh, so recently, it was a terrible tragedy that I saw in the news and was on every social media headline ever and like at the top of Reddit for multiple weeks. Um, Chadwick Boseman passed away. Yeah. Um, and yeah. he had. Uh, um, do you remember what he passed away? Cancer. Of? It was cancer. It was cancer. What kind of cancer? It was like because um, he was he I knew it for a while. It wasn't, right? was it, it wasn't pancreatic, was it? I don't remember. I can't recall. I think it was something. But I, know, I know it was very aggressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah for a, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, mm. So yeah. Although Chad McPosman, was, um, he had terminal cancer. He died without a will. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um. Cool. So Black Panther actor uh, died with um who after having terminal cancer for years. Um. Uh. There was a bunch of articles that recently came out saying that he did not have a will. Yes. His wife just filed for probate. Yeah. So um. I wanted to talk about it here really quick. Um. And so yeah. Basically. Uh. Instead of having a will, he got married to his wife. Um. In 2020, a couple of months before he passed away. Um. And. Uh, she inherited, he had about a million dollars in assets because TMZ, those wonderful, reliable reporters over at TMZ that really just want the best for the world, went and like f- talked to the probate court and got like. It's a public p- filing. All you do is, oh, really? all you, all you do is walk Could in. Could we have and- gotten it for the show? Probably I can. Uh, put, yeah. LA, it's well, yeah, no, it's kind of, no. kind of skeevy. I don't yeah. want to be a part of that kind of show. That's exactly right. I, 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 I pulled Michael Jackson's will. And I pulled. You can pull celebrity wills out of probate all the time. Really? Yeah. That's kind of cool. It's but, on the public yeah. rec- record. It is a little yeah. skeevy. So, like, which is why I'll, you want a better estate plan as none of all records. Yeah, a lot of people do trusts because you don't have to file that. Michael gotcha. Jackson's will literally says "refer to my trust." It's like the shortest will I've ever right. seen. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Because he planned his estate. Yeah. Unlike Prince. Yeah. He did not. So, Chad anyway, with back to Chad with both so he had a, a million in assets. He had a million in assets. He marries his wife. Um, he has no kids, and he has two parents. Um, so the wife gets everything. Wife gets everything. Cool. Right. Um, the the and you, I sent you this outline, and you mentioned that. Um, so so also in the TMZ probate document that they found, it mentions like that he has trusts and everything. Um, and so from my sure. understanding. I, I didn't understand what that means. So, like, um, does does his wife most likely inherit these trusts? And, like, did he set up the trust most likely because he knew he had cancer? Or do you think that it was the trust was set up because Disney paid him in a trust? Is that ever a thing that happens? Um, I wanted to hear your take on that. Yeah. So my reading of it, it, it sounded like – it didn't sound like she said that there's a trust in her filings. But, again, I didn't read the filings. But it sounded like TMZ was postulating – because I guess the the thought is there's no way that his total net worth was only around a million dollars. Gotcha. There's just no way. Gotcha. So there has to be something else out there, and we're just not sure what it is. So he very well could have gone out and established a trust on his, on his own. He could have done and, lots of yeah. – And that might make sense because a lot of – so as an actor, you know, you're getting your, your royalty payments. You're getting, you know, a percentage of everything that involves your image. So a lot of that is going to continue to pay money. So it would make sense for him to set up a trust – 
to to manage that as a continuing income producing asset. So you could put a lot of those assets into a trust, and then that trust could also be responsible for maintaining all the income from that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, you could have just titled a lot. Of, you could have just had things titled jointly. You could have left a lot of. You could have prepaid a giant insurance. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you could have parked his money in lots yeah. of places. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would I would imagine you have a trust if the state was. And I be- and if he had an estate tax issue, which I assume he would have had. And I um, believe uh, some of the actors guilds do have mechanisms where you can name a beneficiary for your royalty payments. Yeah. Really? Right. Yeah. And, and the estate might, nice. co- if yeah. not the estate would collect it if they didn't sell. And one. if you set up a beneficiary, you know, after you die, then that immediately passes on to that person when you die. So it doesn't yeah. even become part of your estate. It just yeah, yeah. immediately transfers. So that million might just be the stuff he had that wasn't in the trust set up already yeah. to be taken care of gotcha yeah. so he most likely made a plan and um but it just he just didn't have a will as a part of that plan yes for some reason he decided right. not to have a will as part of his plan which honestly <laughs> it's fascinating to me if he had this elaborate setup but didn't do the simplest part but i don't know it could have been a part I mean, of his plan it, it, and georgia i mean there are some reasons why you might want to do that kind of transfer if you have, if particularly a situation like him where his wife was the only heir, it's not the most onerous process, but I don't know. Um, he, hopefully he and his attorney arrived at a good rationale for that. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Um, or he could have had a will prior and that's in the, he could have also had a will then got married, which renders typically most wills written in anticipation of marriage or rendered oh, void by the marriage. That's a great point. Um, so... Oh, okay. So, so maybe he, he might have gotten married to intentionally that. replace the will, yeah. or gotcha. the will was no longer appropriate Valid or whatever. Yeah. yeah, or or he may have gotten married, and then by the time they were ready to actually fix it, he may not have been able to execute it. Anymore, yeah, that makes sense. How he was uh, mentally. Honestly, the great takeaway for that is when you get married, make a plan to like update your will because, like, oh, yeah. or I guess do yeah. it right away. Yeah, do it right away. Yeah, do it right away. It make part of your yeah whatever the people do after they get married. <laughs> and before we hop off of this, um, because I have a habit of watching these clips back and then realizing that like I'm like because I t- do so much planning and things for I don't, I sometimes don't feel the emotional weight of like what we've just read. So like I don't know. I remember being super shocked like when so I upsetting. really yes. really really upsetting. Yeah. Like, yes. I I don't know. He was phenomenally talented and everything about him that I heard is that he was just like a really good dude. Yes. And the fact that he did all those movies and did that good of a job while sick. Yeah. Yeah, could you imagine? Oh, my goodness. No, I can't do work when I have, like, a cold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, if oh. I had a terminal illness, I would be so whiny. Like, yeah, and I would come in every day. And and just like, like, if I'm terminally like, ill, was, you'll know yeah, it because yeah. it's, like, he died whining the whole time. That's yeah. double yeah. what they taste. No, I mean, <laughs> on, Steven's, on Steven's gravestone, it'll say he, he died, died whining. whining the whole time. It's like, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Fluff my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I definitely it's think it's crazy how like stuff, much stuff he got done. Yeah, yeah. Like imagine, I mean, I mean, I looked, I was looking at his like IMDb, and like he was, I mean, he was in a ton of stuff, but like really, I mean, his big breakout was was Black Panther. Yeah, and like oh, yeah. it was. I don't know to to think about it in that context, right? Where it's like, great, like he he probably got he auditioned, got that role like after his diagnosis, yeah. right? Like that is a crazy like yeah, I don't, I don't there know. is also a depressing aspect societally americans do is what we often do when people are dying or have cancer is we valorize people who hide their cancer i don't know there's something very odd about him not being able to have the space to be like i have cancer but i'm still working yeah. please don't yeah. pity me <laughs> i almost <laughs> wonder if there was a part of him that didn't want that to detract from the character oh yeah I'm I, sure. think, I think he realized like what an important oh, yeah. character what like black panther was mm-hmm. for for everybody especially for people of color oh yeah yeah i'm sure i'm so sure he, if he had said he had cancer that's all people would say about him whenever he did yeah. that thing it's like oh look he was black panther with cancer yeah <laughs> right and in, in the meantime we got these like massive movies where like black panther was just like a total badass right? yeah and then later on we're like oh wait what yeah no yeah. you're totally right i mean thinking about it from the other perspective where yeah he he leads with that and then yeah those movies before they even came out like you'd have to like sit there and be like wow i can't believe he's doing this with cancer and like because that didn't happen like you just got to just enjoy the movie. yeah mm-hmm. 
That's just like there's a main. Oh, or not, not that you wouldn't enjoy the movie if the main <laughs> actor. Never oh, mind. No, no. You guys no, get no, it. It, it, it. It has like a different context <laughs> to it. But also, there's this amazing book about cancer, like The Emperor of All Maladies. It talks about the history of cancer and how we treat it. But like, it, it takes on. It has this weird cultural like thing over, particularly Westerners, about how we deal with terminal illness and ignoring it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And also how we I mean, progress in treatment, stuff like that. But that sounds cool. Yeah. What is that called? Um, the Emperor of All Maladies. I'll check that out. Um, I forgot That's who wrote it. He's a he's an oncologist, and he, the book is amazing. Hmm. And it, but he, he, I really like sociology books about diseases, just yeah. generally. But cool. <laughs> um, great. Next question we got. It comes from Avo.com. One more time. Yay. It is an estate planning question. <laughs> um, if you get quoted a price for a mobile home and a property that the person dies in, um, and the person dies, is it legally binding? I loved this. I thought this was a great question. Basically, before we read this, just to frame it up, uh, uh, they they talk to a somebody. Very particular question. <laughs> they talk to somebody who offers to sell them this motor home uh, plus a plot of land for a certain amount of money, and uh, the uh, after the person has offered it and they're about to like close the deal the person passes away mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to read the whole question right here my husband's friend quoted him a price of $19,000 for land and a mobile home he gave my husband the keys to the mobile home so he could remodel it he told my husband once he was through that they would go to the lawyer's office and have the papers drawn up the man selling the property died and now his wife is wanting property value of $46,000 we handed over $10,000 we have we have over 10000 in dollars invested in the remodel can she do this oh crap okay that that last step that yeah. last sentence really changed the context right because then you start we start talking i mean would this be an equitable estoppel yeah. situation oh yeah but i'm sorry okay, what was I, that an equitable estoppel we'll, we'll back up to that <laughs> okay, okay. there's a general rule um contract okay, agreements to sell land have to be in writing have to be in there, writing there's this annoying Even if thing i have the keys i have the keys to this motorhome and i'm remodeling okay, your keys transferred okay. possession but an offer you can't i can't if someone says i'll yep. sell you this property for 19,000 and then they change their mind and it's just a verbal offer mm -hmm. i can't go to a court and compel them to sell it but if we've both signed a written agreement saying We'll sell you'll sell this to me for $19,000 here are the terms of the sale and when it has to close and stuff like that and if one person breaches at that point, then it, then I, the court can compel you to sell me the property. Does it have to be a super? Does it have to be like a notarized, super official contract, or can the it better, be a, the, the better? It, it depends on the jurisdiction. I yeah, think. most okay. jurisdictions. This is where a real estate agent can really. The real estate agents literally have standard forms for this because some real estate lawyers have litigated it. But if it covers basic issues like the buyer, seller, price, conditions of sale, and stuff like that, right? The more detail you'd want, the better. Mm -hmm. um, and using a real estate standard form is probably ideal because we know it's been tested so in court. So a cocktail napkin with Bill is going to sell me his motorhome and his bland for $19,000 with two yeah. signatures. Yeah. That's not that, going to work. That hire a lawyer. Hire gotcha. a lawyer. How much do you, because want, that's how the much thing, do you right? want this property? And the thing is, that, you know, land transfers, there's different types, right? There, there's there's warranty deeds, there's quick claim deeds, there's all these different ways to actually sell someone property. Okay. And you need to know what you're getting because if it's a warranty deed and it turns out this person didn't really own the property, you can sue them and get your money back. Yeah, if they do a quick claim deed and it turns out they didn't really own the property, then you're you're kind of stuck. Yeah, and but jumping on the other issue with so the land and the mobile home, I'm right. not sure. Most state, states often vary by how they treat mobile homes. If it treats the mobile like a personal property, then you may be able to get a court to compel it. But right. realistically, when they said that last sentence that they did renovations mm -hmm. so they were yeah. acting in reliance on that written that oral offer to sell it and apparently the deceased person let them do improvements on it mm -hmm. in anticipation of a sale now you're kind of binding each other up yeah. um and he was either where promise was a promissory estoppel uh but yeah it, promissory it, estoppel but there's there's various things, but there's reliance or I think. But the, if if you if you let so if I tell you we're gonna do this deal and then you say, oh, well, I'm gonna fix this up in anticipation of it, and I yeah. say, go ahead. Yeah. Now you're starting to to make a situation where it would be patently unfair to let the other person just benefit right. from the improvement. Okay, great. So hold and, on a minute. Now we're in back in the good zone. That's yeah. the principle of equity, yeah. right? Okay. Which is, you know, the, the court at the end of the day should be pursuing fairness, right? Yeah. And there's certain as there's certain areas where the the principles of equity or actions in equity don't apply, and that's like by statute. 
but but equity is is pretty overarching on a pretty big majority of stuff that you do in civil court. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and in criminal court too, to some extent. But mm -hmm. what was it, what was the word that you used? At the estoppel. Beginning? Estoppel. So an there's there's estoppel. different types of estoppel, okay. right? Um, I think I said an equitable estoppel, which I, that may not be like a statutorily yeah, established sure. one. <laughs> this is but, but really, so most <laughs> most estoppels are based in equity. Yeah. So principles. what is an estoppel? Define so estoppel. Estoppel for me. means the court is going to stop someone. Yeah. From ah, doing something. Estoppels are things where stop my yeah. right to stop things. <laughs> so yeah. a promissory estoppel, yeah. right, would be uh, you made a promise to me, yeah. I relied on it and spent money on it. And now you're trying to just take it all back. Well, I'm going to ask the court to, to stop, stop you. me. So to either they stop commit you. an estoppel. Yeah. So they'll, yeah. they'll stop you. So either they're going to get. Can I commit an estoppel as, as an individual? Can I stop you something? You request the court. The court. Okay, can. gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. A judge can. Well, um, the, so or, then I think it's. it's what, what? How to fix it? They issue an injunction under principles of estoppel. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Technically how it usually goes. So yeah. it's not yeah, a verb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I stopped this. <laughs> no, you are estopped. <laughs> oh, I was estopped. But the court okay. has to figure out how to make you whole. So either right. they tell you, either they go through with the sale mm -hmm. or you give them the money the back, money back for the, the cash value of the renovation. For, for the renovation. Yeah, and I think in this situation, right, I wouldn't just be pursuing. So I think in their situation, right, I think the land, they're probably stuck, mm -hmm. right, depending on the jurisdiction. But for that, Mobile home, again, it's going to depend on how they treat it. But if nothing else, I would be pursuing not just the money that I spent on renovating, but the added value, right? Gotcha. Yes. So if the mobile home was worth 10 grand, I spent 10 grand fixing it up. Now it's worth 30. Well, right. I'm going to be going after that that 20 yeah. Yeah. value that I added. Yes. That's great. Eventually, you might make it painful enough where that's why it just gives up and sells it to and you. And you meet somewhere in the middle or they sell it to you. But if it's but if they're saying like mobile home and it's not like an R V, it's like a, a double wide on a lot. Yeah. Do you really want to own a double wide on a lot that you don't own? Right. Yes. Right. right. Um, especially if it's somebody who's mad at you about something. Yeah. Like oh that. yeah, you then your landlord hopefully hates you. You never yeah. have to like, see oh, each other. Cut yeah. costs and yeah. get out. Yeah. Um cool. Um I had a lot of fun writing this and I bet I'm gonna not have as much fun reading it because okay. there's a lot of Fun words in here. Here we go. I'll be looking at you the whole time. <clears throat> the year is 1912. 2,435 bright-eyed passengers from competing social classes board humanity's greatest feat of engineering, the 46,328-ton, six-engine, deck-chair-filled, lifeboat-deficient, unsinkable behemoth, the Titanic. Among these 2,435 are two young, star-crossed, soon-to-be lovers. Jack, a lowly artist with a knack for sketching salacious scribblings of passionate Parisian ladies, and Rose, an affluent young woman with an, a voyeuristic... F and Rose, of an affluent young woman with voyeuristic fantasies that just so happened to involve struggling artists and a 1912 Coupe de Ville. Rose is set to be married to Cal, a rich 1912-flavored douchebag who gives her the heart of the ocean, a necklace that today would be worth around $250 million. After falling for Jack's dreamy eyes and aptitude for arts and crafts, Rose gives the blue net diamond necklace back to Cal. Then, uh-oh, the boat sinks. Amidst the confusion and shenanigans of Cal shooting at Rose and Jack in a chase around the boat, Rose eventually winds up in possession of the diamond necklace. Adrift in the Arctic Ocean... Rose unwilling un, with Rose unwilling to share space on the ginormous door she's hanging out on, she leaves Jack to die of hypothermia. Rose lets go of his frozen body and watches him sink to his death after explicitly telling Jack that she'll never let go. <laughs> <laughs> Upon returning to shore in possession of the diamond necklace, Rose changes her last name to escape Cal and her overbearing mother. Years later, the level-headed Cal commits suicide after, pose, um, after losing all of his wealth in the stock market crash of 1926. 1929, sorry. Um, the movie ends with Rose revealing to the audience that she still has the diamond necklace, and she just plops it into the ocean while making a jovial sound effect that's really funny, and I hope Oscar puts it in here. Um, in complete disregard for the multi-million dollar expedition whose literal sole purpose was to recover the diamond necklace. The old hag then nods off in her sleep. My question is... Uh, I if, like Rose more than that you said that last part. You <laughs> like her more? Well, but now at least the expedition knows. Now it's like, yeah, no, it's definitely down there. <laughs> 
necklace. But like she has the necklace and she couldn't just be like, hey, here, oh, I would have thrown my cat it. or something and be like. Well, they came all that way. They should at least have fun trying to get it. It's a, <laughs> the real less. The, 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 well, the, the, the journey is the part that mattered. Mm, you ever no. heard about money laundering, Noah? <laughs> By throwing it into the ocean, <laughs> they cannot <laughs> prove that she had stolen it and kept it all those years. That's true. For yeah. expedition. But but no, they, she, I mean, they, they decide, okay, they quit the expedition. And then because they, uh, like, they're like, okay, it's hopeless. We can't find this thing. It died with uh, Cal or whatever. And then she should just be like, never mind, guys. I have a good feeling. Exactly. <laughs> and she doesn't. She says, sounds great. Quit the expedition. As they're going back to shore, she throws it away. I don't think the expedition people are the sympathetic people in this. I do. They're kind of grave robbers. Well, sure. But, like, also, like, <laughs> uh, I yeah. just sympathize with yeah, that. Yeah, like, no. I they're grave robbers. Jack, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I just think Rose is the worst. Anyway. I just think you had a lot of fun writing that. Yeah, I did. I do like yeah, you had a lot of fun. flowery writing. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Uh, my question is, if Rose, just to bring it back to estate planning, the context of estate planning, if Rose wasn't the worst, could she, <laughs> <laughs> could she have created an estate plan to bequeath the heart of the ocean to her daughter um, or the expedition team? Of course. Can you bequeath stolen property? Probably at That's this the question. point. Well, at, th at this point. Okay, this is true. You could always bequeath it. You could put it in your will. Okay. That, right. Whether it's a... Whether it she in owns back it to... Yeah. Well, whether and, it has and legal effect is... I haven't watched Titanic in a long time. Mm -hmm. I watched... The last time I watched Titanic, it was on a double VHS, and I will not watch yes. it again. Oh, my God. You took out a VHS, and then you put the second one in. Yeah. That yeah. blows my mind. Yeah, we get it. You're young. I'm sorry. So... <laughs> So <laughs> I, I literally don't, found in my house three VHS I, tapes that oh I will God. never know what's on no. them because I am never <laughs> no, never know. So yeah. uh, I can't remember now. Did he give it to her or did she steal it? So by the end of there. the movie, so so he hands her a coat and inside the coat with it, he he forgets that he puts mm -hmm. the diamond necklace in the coat pocket, and so she's wearing his coat and just so happens to find the diamond necklace in the pocket. Okay. Abandoned I property. Yeah. I can proffer two things. One, yeah. who's going to testify that she stole it? He's dead. So yeah, and that's my other question is <laughs> right. if like like well, if he well, dies. Well, here's where it comes out, right? Yeah. If somebody all of a sudden shows up with a $250 million famous necklace that you know your great, great uncle had yeah well, well obviously also, you're gonna pursue that but but he's just not a stranger there's, there's no there's no proof that she stole it there's no proof it wasn't a gift she could say it was a gift yeah also yeah. um you know what steps were they taking right so so the the statute of limitations there's gonna be a problem there because did they have cause to believe it was stolen when would, it, when would, this, when would the clock have started when would the clock have started right is if they think it's just the bottom of the ocean, but at that point though, it's, what is it's the abandoned property oh, on, on something like that. Oh, I have no, I have I have no idea. Off the top of my head, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. um, it, it, it varies a lot. How about this? State. Less than yeah. the amount of time between the Titanic sinking and the movie being filmed. <laughs> the, the eighty something years. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm certain it's less than eighty years. Okay. Um, but they don't start the clock until sure always though. like right when the crime happens. It's more until you knew or should have known that the crime had been committed. But, uh, but gotcha. honestly, if you're Rose, I mean, Rose is a pretty solid case. She yeah. was dating him. He gave it to her once. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. as if. Yeah, that's a great point. Did he did he rescind the gift? So she gives it back to him. She rescinds. But did the he gift. accept it back? Uh, <laughs> she puts it in a safe, and then he accepts it back. Yes. Okay, but I don't think a jury would know that. Prove it. Yeah, that's <laughs> if I'm if I'm Allegedly. Rose, I'm like, yeah. where's your evidence? Yeah. But I will say this: yeah. if I'm Rose and I've got this two hundred and fifty million dollar necklace, unless my heirs are freaking loaded. I'm not going to just gift them this necklace. I'm going to have it, like, sold and give them the money. Because it's okay. me as a practical person, she, like, she, unless I am a multi-billionaire, I'm not going to have $250 million tied up in a piece of jewelry. Maybe okay. it's a, maybe yeah, it's a maybe the value doesn't matter to her. Maybe it's entirely sentimental value. She, she, no, she and that's like, exactly she what like, it is. I never thought it might be worth that much money. I'm not an expert in Girl, jewelry. Girl, it is knows. a diamond the size of a bird's head. Well, how, how a large you know bird. It, they could have had. I don't know. Whatever the 1912 what version. You, of what do you think it was? Glass. <laughs> it, it could have been the 1912 version of like a cubic zirconia. Cal's rich. The whole point <laughs> yeah. is, Cal is rich. Yeah. He buys them a suite on the Titanic. Dude's how not giving her he? glass. He was so. Rich. He was. Not, was he rich? Because he's he lost, super if he rich, lost yeah. all your money in a day, how? That's rich, true. If it's all tied up well, in stock, the, it like was a very brittle the, market. No, it, <laughs> no, it's the 1929. No, it's the stock market. The big people historically actually did really well in the Great Depression. 
Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, unless he had over leveraged because, himself. Because, yeah. Right. I'm which, assuming which, he did. Which, 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 suicide. If he's the, if he's the kind of jackass himself. who buys value, like jewelry that <laughs> valuable. Donald Trump, I think he might be Donald Trump rich. I think he might yeah. be fake rich. Yeah. So, but, but like if you're the kind of guy who spends that kind of money on jewelry to give to your fiance – and like you're not also like super super set. You're also the kind of guy who's maybe going to over leverage yourself. Yeah. And maybe it's like, oh, like the options fell out. I owe my creditors yeah. 150 million dollars. Okay. I know the this is not a fair thing. Whenever someone says leverage, I assume they're broke. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just right. assume like they so, might have a lot of money so, yeah. in their hands, but somehow the balance sheet is terrible. So all all yeah. so just theoretical crap about Cal's. Estate. Cal's business dealings. Yeah, I think that yeah. she she certainly could bequeath that to one of her heirs. One of Cal's heirs could try to attack whether she yes. had the right to do that. Gotcha. But that doesn't prevent her from bequeathing it. It just might affect the ability of her heirs to keep to, it. Yeah, all the all the taint of the all the, not the taint all the all the cloud of that ownership yeah. still carries But you carries can through. bet you? at two hundred and fifty million dollars, <laughs> they're gonna try. Yeah. Do you have to pay a state tax if I give a necklace to one of my? Do you have to pay a state tax? Technically, it would be a gift the, tax at a the gift time. Tax. Yes. Okay. But but there's exclusion excluded categories. So if they were married back then, there wasn't a state tax probably. But even if it was that they had been married or close to be married, you would that's an exclusion category so you would just right. be able to gift it to your spouse relatively tax free okay but um but yes generally there would be and it would be probably based on the value of the actual transfer or what do you mean what is the value of the actual transfer mean, I mean uh, what does that phrase mean so the 250 million dollars would be its current value but it'll be tied to the value when the gift was actually made Okay. And if they were strategic about it and it was a gift tax event, there are many ways you could do to so avoid you're saying paying if she made tax. it if she made it in 1930, right, instead yeah. of 2020. Yeah, yeah. It would be worth it would be, like, be tax you would go you would have to go back in time to gotcha. 1930 was when the original tax event would have occurred. Gotcha. Yeah. Um but there's so many better ways of transferring it. You probably there probably would be if if they ask their estate attorney, I have a two hundred fifty dollar object I'm gonna gift to someone. How would you do it? You would probably plan out a strategy to avoid mm -hmm. having it be taxed. So what strategy would that be? You, know, you could, you could, set, up, you could well, set up a trust. You could set up a loan that you forgive. You well, could set up lots of things if, that would. If it's something like that, where all right, so you're assuming the family has tons of money and this two hundred fifty million dollar thing or you're is whatever. Giving, you're not even giving her the diamond. You're giving her beneficial use of the diamond. Right. Or you <laughs> could even I mean, you could talk about a way to do like a charitable trust where maybe. You know, it, it remains in your estate as far as ownership, but it can be given over to a charity for use, and you can write off a lot I, of I that. Think about, I wouldn't even give her the diamond. I would definitely hold that diamond in trust where she she's allowed to borrow it. So hold on, let me <laughs> because let I me... I don't trust her. She's already given it back once, and she will let a man die. No, no, we're, but we're talking <laughs> so, about her giving it to her kids. Oh no, no, I would say yeah. it when Cal left the yeah. Cal, but her leaving it to her kids, she's also wily. Well, she can't <laughs> inherit from Jack's estate for Slayer statues. <laughs> oh yeah, and Jack, I don't think Jack had much. But... He had his he had his pencils. <laughs> He had his it, it was drawings his, or whatever they were. His free spirit. And I'm a, king of the world. A portfolio of sketches of, <laughs> yeah. French, of French girls. A very valuable. <laughs> yeah. Actually, maybe that would be worth a lot of money, <laughs> yeah. ironically, but, like 50 years later. Yeah. But because <laughs> she yeah. killed him, she would not be allowed to inherit from his estate. And I mean, she wasn't married or related the to The Arctic him. killed yeah. him. <laughs> no, she killed him by not letting him on the door. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Tell that to a jury. That's another interesting legal question. That's if, not. That's not. It, she, it's she did not. not it's not. I'm being funny like, for the podcast. We joking, this is not okay, legal I mean, advice. We were, going back to like torts in law yeah. school, there was a theory that they, she may have a little bit of civil liability if there was some proof that they're on a common expedition together if, and she had some sort mm -hmm. of duty to keep him safe. She has no duty in this case. Okay. Really, the mm -hmm. captain had the duty and he sank the boat. Yeah. But, yeah. But like, he closed. But if <laughs> it's a well, tragedy, but, but it didn't really what happen. If, I'm sorry. Did Don't she to induce Jack to get into the water with her, saying she would help save him, and then tried to pull him onto the door? Right. So by doing that, she took control of what he was doing, induced him to put himself into that dangerous position, and then failed to act reasonably to get him out of the danger. That sounds like a question for the jury. And honestly, I need it to have a It sounds like a question for the bar exam and then never again. Honestly, <laughs> I need to have a podcast where we literally take different sides of cases and try it out. That sounds like this podcast. Yeah, that's like this podcast. People, yeah. let people just vote on who was right. That sounds yeah. fun. Oh, that sounds great. Like a mock trial type yeah, of Yeah, like a mock trial based on the fact pattern of a bad movie. Yeah. That sounds like so much fun because I do not know what I'm doing and I love to just make some wild accusations and let people in the comments vote. Un unrelatedly, yeah, yeah, why not? Unrelatedly, really I thought I saw Titanic maybe like 
in after I got from college, I was like, this movie's terrible. It's not going to make me cry. It oh my made God. me cry oh, it so hard. Me. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I was like, I'm not going to cry. Then the kids, then it came for the kids. I'm like, fuck, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> those, I just, for some reason, when I watched those, like, four people playing those violins at the end, I'm just like, oh. I don't know. There, was, there was no scene where a Clydesdale made friends with a dog. <laughs> So I didn't cry. <laughs> but it is very easy for a movie to like play me like an emotional fiddle. <laughs> I love like, it. Oh. Well, cool. I'm glad we cleared but, all that okay, up. Okay, but Rose is trash, but I do like that she fucked up the expedition. <laughs> That's infuriating to me. I just I appreciate the entrepreneurial spirit of like, I'm going to go get someone to like pay for this expedition. I'm, I'm going to go very, follow my dreams, look for the treasure. It is very and then funny to me. The woman just chucks Wait, 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 wait. She and Induce them to take her no, out no, no, there? No, 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 okay. no, The, the, the expedition. Because that guy. would be fraud. Whose idea no, was it to do expedition? Whose idea was the expedition? James Cameron. It was James Cameron. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, oh, the it's, it's like James Cameron's fictionalized version of himself. Exactly. Of yeah. being a grave robber. There are dead yeah. people down no, there. Yeah, it's, it's... Well, the guy's not really. It makes it might float. Well, but whatever the no, deal it's is. Also, <laughs> it's also that they appreciate the historical context of the thing. Like, yeah, so we're going to go and mess this up and cause it to further erode, disturb all the remains that are down there so we can find this really valuable Rock. You guys think there's an ethical like? Yes. Yes. I think really? it's terrible to go where people are dead yeah. to salvage a shipwreck. Really? <laughs> I salvage think... it for what? It sank. We don't, what are we gonna do? We're gonna refloat it so it can sink again? <laughs> so, so no, salvaging well, I don't know why I salvaging a that. shipwreck by itself is not unethical, right? No. That's fine, right? Because reuse, right? I'm, I'm a big recycler. Reuse that material. <laughs> But I think it becomes an issue when it's a shipwreck where that many people died and they're still in the boat, and then you're disturbing remains. I Why think if like you want to salvage to that, rest? you need. I think you need to go about it in a specific way that's respectful to that. Okay, but they, they're kind of buried at sea. I don't know. It's it's weird to me unless they actually were. I mean, after eighty years, they've all been eaten by fish. Let's all like, oh, sure. be straight up. They have all been eaten by <laughs> yeah, fish it, and crabs. Like a pr- <laughs> but you still need to be respectful. Yeah, yeah, but like if you could refloat, like a Pearl Harbor, they like. Like just left Arizona down there. Also, because it would be a monster thing just to go back out and poke around dead yeah. bodies. Yeah, and I mean, and I guess at a certain point too, is a lot of this, you know, it's personal property, right? Yes, and that it, too. Should that actually go to the descendants of the people that died, right? Well, like, at what point do you really call it abandoned? Yeah, I don't think it's fair to call it abandoned if you died. Yeah. No. <laughs> hmm. Like if if I die, my stuff is not up for grabs. I think. Well, that's why you have a will and a trust. <laughs> yeah, but even before they get to me, before they probate, they can't just like grab my wall and be like. So you don't want like a this. you don't want like a baggins situation where all the baggins is come in from elsewhere and <laughs> yeah. take everything out of your hobbit hole. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and then, Bilbo and then, baggins. And like we're whatever, talking about Lord it, of the Rings. Okay, and then yes. they can probate okay. whatever. Yes, we're left. talking about Lord of the Rings. Yes. So. I haven't. I've only seen the first Lord of the Rings. So You're I not. See okay. I'm, I'm, I well, don't like Lord okay. Fun story. That scene's in the first Lord of the Rings. But go ahead and the podcast. It is from the scene. Yeah. It is the first one. Uh, oh, you I just, end it. I yeah, just can't get over that scene when like he wakes up and everybody's like, "Oh, Gandalf!" And like you know when he like, I hate Lord of the Rings. Do you know the coma scene that I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Good. It's okay. the most fraught topic of my mission. marriage. But I hate really? Lord of the Rings. It's boring. <laughs> I think the first one's boring. I'm sorry. It's negative. Okay. Put roast us in the comments, guys. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Let's Talk About Death and Taxes. If you enjoyed this, uh, definitely let us know in the comments, guys. Our law firm is focused on setting people up and helping them out with legacy preservation, anything involving last wills, trusts, and estate planning. Um, we also created a PDF, um, and that's linked in the comments below. And uh, James is going to tell you about it. Yeah, so we went ahead and put together a brief PDF format pamphlet, and this is a primer for somebody who is new to thinking about estate planning. It's going to tell you what it is, and it's also going to go through three common mistakes that people make when they think about estate planning. And it's going to be titled something like that. (laughs) So go ahead and check it out. Uh, It's pretty accessible, and read it over. If you have any questions or if it makes you think about anything, give us a call. See if we can help you out. Yeah, you can also work with us straight away if you give us a call at 404-939-7562 or send us an email at info at modernestateplanning.com. Guys, if, also, if you could share this video on your timeline, that seriously helps us out. Guys, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching.